just hold tight We're up at the moonlight Believe in the magic On sight We'll make it feel just right Just look at that bright light Believe in the magic And we can save you from your past This bond is always gonna you gonna do we're doing it on the last couple of days we decided to split from the adults and explore a little bit on our own I've always been curious about the nightlife here so my cousin took us out to a popular bar in Da Nang not much is different in my opinion except they serve fruits with the alcohol you order and I'm definitely not complaining The next morning when we're all super hungover, we've decided to start our day by getting bung chia ga, which is one of the most popular breakfast dish in Da Nang. It has three different kinds of fish cake, steamed fish cake, fried fish cake, and boiled fish cake. All three of these are served over a noodle soup with vermicelli, and you usually top it with pickle, shallot, carrots, and some fresh bean sprout. Let me just tell you, nothing cure my hangover better than a fresh steamy bowl of bung jack ya first thing in the morning. And dare I say, it did a better job than your typical bowl of pho. So after we finished our bung jack ya, about 5 minutes later we decided that we were hungry again. So we went to check out this place with steamed rice cake. Bánh cuốn. Bánh cuốn. Very good. Good job, honey. The really cool thing about this place is you get to see them make it right in front of you. Yeah, sitting right up front, you see a tiny assembly line. One person is going to be laying out all the rice paper, and then they pass it to the next person to do the folding and the filling. So, very efficient. <laughs> and this is the traditional way of making bánh cuốn. So it's very unique that they still do this until this very day. And it's just thin rice paper with mushroom and ground pork in the middle as filling and you serve it with Vietnamese ham and then dip it in fish sauce. And I don't think it gets much fresher than that. I mean, this is made to order. Yeah, totally. <laughs> to the fullest. So after that, it was just about time for lunch. <laughs> yeah, so five minutes later, it was time for lunch three. Lunch three. We decided to go get bung mum. So bung mum is one of the two dish that I could eat until the day I die. The other one is mi wang, but we'll talk about that later. So this one is the food of my childhood, adulthood, and probably on my deathbed. So what it is, it is roast pork belly over a bed of vermicelli, topped with some fried shallot, and most importantly, mum. Mum is a fermented fish sauce, but it's fermented differently. As you can see here, it's not your clear fish sauce that you used to seeing in the state. It's a murkier, grayer, darker color. It's so much more pungent. You'll either hate it or you will love it. Either way, it will change you. This is the dankest fish sauce <laughs> on the planet. You see how thick it is, there's chunks in it, and it has probably my favorite flavor profile of all time. So you got the umami from the fermenting fish. It's a little bit salty. Very salty. <laughs> and you pair that with some lime and chili. This is definitely one of my top favorite foods of all time as well. It is so pungent that what people typically do is you can't just eat the fish sauce raw. You have to mix it with lime and most importantly, very ripe pineapple because the sweetness from the pineapples kind of dilute the saltiness of the fermented fish sauce otherwise you just can't eat it your tongue would just shrivel from how salty it is usually about one cup of this fish sauce you have to dilute it with about half of a pineapple that's just so you know how condensed the sauce is it's packed full of flavor if you're gonna you would add a lot of chili paste to it to kind of cut through all the you know pork belly and, and the fish flavor don't go here on dates 
you're not going to be kissing anybody after this. Or if your date loves this dish, you should marry her right away. Or we'll put some in your pocket and use it for chemical warfare later. Yeah. <laughs> this dish makes me happy like no other. It's so good. We definitely recommend you trying it out. So guarantee you will get food coma immediately after all of this food. So we got Vietnamese coffee right afterward. And this is just so that we can regain consciousness to eat some more. After busting our guts in Da Nang, we headed over to Hoi An, which is the ancient city. So the city is known for its historical architecture. Everything within the city was preserved from hundreds of years ago. Most of the family that are currently living here were here since then. And most of the houses here are preserved to be passed down along generations. So when you're there, it's almost like traveling back in time to see how Vietnam looked like hundreds of years ago. It looks like you're walking through a movie set of a period film. After settling into our hotel, we decided to explore the town. And as we were walking around town, we saw these street food vendors. That street food everywhere. <laughs> just they were everywhere. The first thing we got was these grilled pork skewers. And you can sit down right there on these little red stools and you wrap them in rice paper and lettuce. And you dip it in peanut sauce. So we ate about 100 of these. They charge you per stick. So the whole meal costs us like, what, five bucks? If that, yeah. Yeah, for six people. When in Hoi An, you have to get Hoi An's signature dish, Mi Gao Lo. I love Mi Gao Lo because it's a perfect combination of barbecue pork, sweet soy sauce with the chewiness of the noodle plus the crunch of the local beans. So it's a textural it's wonderland. A it's a textured play, definitely. Because the taste is somewhat basic, but it, there's so many components of texture, you get a little bit of everything. And I like sweeter dishes, so this one hit home for me. So Hoi An is known for its lanterns. The city is always decorated with a lot of lanterns, but around this time when we visited also happened to be the Lantern Festival. So there's even more lanterns. So what we did is we took a rowboat out onto the river that flowed through town. So you can buy these little floating lanterns, you make a wish, and then you let it set sail. It's a twist on one of the traditions because when you are releasing it into the river, another thing that it signify is help releasing all of the soul that didn't get to go to heaven. So by you releasing these lanterns, you are helping set them free because they're no longer trapped here on earth. This is probably one of my favorite things that we did here. Just seeing a river full of these little floating lanterns, magical, yeah. beyond words, yeah. right? I mean, it was at night and just seeing how the river just illuminated with these little speckle of lights and knowing what it stands for, it put you in a somber mood and really makes you kind of appreciate the environment that you're currently in. It really did feel almost fairy tale like you got the lanterns in the sky. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there was lantern in the sky, there was lantern in the river. And all the while there were folks singing. Live music too, not yeah, you know, yeah. live performers. On the side of the river. So it was really nice. I've always loved Hoi An for what it stands for. It's the way that it was preserved, it's the way that people hold on to the traditions and they maintain it until this very day. It's beautiful. I mean, the city is known for its lights, the silks, the lanterns, all things magical. <laughs> so it's just it's beautiful in the most glamorous yet pure way. I think the fact that 
it's preserved as a historical city. You just get this really strong sense of nostalgia, even if you've never been there. It, it's like a very warm kind of liveliness. Mm -hmm. It's strange, huh? The way that it's so busy but calming at the same time. It's a great reminder of how beautiful the past was. This place is a very famous chicken and rice place in Hoi An. It's a small little restaurant that sits about like 20 people max. And you can see them make the rice and serve it to you right then and there. So what makes this place unique is that they utilize every part of the chicken. In one course, you will get to taste all of that. From the eggs to the organs to even yeah. the broth is used for the rice, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when you order, they serve you the shredded chicken over the rice. And they also serve you with all of the chicken organs, so that include eggs, livers, the stomachs. And they use the broth that they boil the chicken in to make the rice. So when you eat the rice, you can really taste the chicken broth that it was cooked in. Super buttery, super flavorful, and so buttery that I feel like when you're eating the rice, it's it leaves bit. the film, right? Yeah, chicken leave, film in your yeah, mouth. Yeah, the fat films in your in your mouth. Typically, you dip the chicken in pepper, salt, and lime. That's the way that they normally eat it. I would have to say though, the organs, the liver, and the eggs was so good. I didn't think I would like it. But again, another play on the texture. Vietnamese cuisine is so big on texture. It's never just one flavor and one texture. In every dish that you have over there, you will get to experience different texture, definitely, and also different flavor. Good. It's a little bit sweet, a little bit fatty. Overall, it's very good.